Dude, I'm trying to even remember like what I did at all this week other than what we're about to get into. And it's all a blur. Like I, I worked two, three days um in the early part of the week. Um, and like that's basically it. There was there was a leaf game on. I do remember that. Yeah, there there was one on. Uh they won that one. And uh yeah, that's literally it. The and the back half of the week, also a blur, but in a different sense. Um, but yeah, I've got nothing special from my week other than what we're about to talk about. How about you? Dude, honestly, I think we just get into it because, like, I'm yeah. just going to bore you with what I did this past week because I didn't do anything. And the only thing that I can remember is Otani Watch. Hashtag it. It was all over Twitter, all over Toronto Twitter. I don't know if it was, like, world Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. Um, But, dude, Otani Watch, Kawhi Watch same thing we were we were looking at private jets being chartered from anaheim to uh pearson airport we were uh we were waiting on you know the reports of you know credentialed reporters saying that shohei otani is coming to toronto you know he's en route it didn't turn out like that so uh let's let's take it back to the beginning uh, i when when did we really start hearing about Otani to the Jays. I feel like I'd say it's been, it's probably been two weeks since like the very first mention of the Jays involved in the sweepstakes, mm-hmm. but it was still like on the outskirts. It was still, every reporter would phrase their, their, their tweet with Dodgers are the favorite. Here's a bunch of other teams that are involved, right? Yeah. That are in the run. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. over the past couple of weeks, we had, we saw some teams, I think pull out. Uh, there was the Cubs that kind of pulled out as well. Like they had, uh, something going for him. The Jays, who ended up becoming a finalist, we had the Dodgers. I think the Angels were also involved in talks. Like obviously, they wanted to keep show. Like they would have loved to have keep, kept Shohei Otani, but Dude. there was no way that guy was re-signing with the Angels. I'm so sorry, Angels fans, but Se- Artie Moreno does not have that type of money. That's the owner of the Angels. For anybody who doesn't know, he he's not rich. The only other team uh, I'd say was in the mix was the Giants, but even then, like they, it was basically they were like by... they were like on the periphery peripheral. of the peripheral. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like yeah. there was they were probably involved, especially considering they lost out on Judge last year. Judge, and you know what else? Is, like we forget too. At least I'm pretty sure it was last year as well. It was the Korea? Thing. Korea? Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. right. And so and, and then year this too, year we man. are the Giants. They did like they're the Giants have been decent team. Uh, I think they were. And I'm pretty... saying, dude, Correa too. Like Correa had a yes. had a pretty good year. Like, dude, if he was yeah. on the Giants, that that could have been you know a team to look so out I, for in the West. It's crazy because I think with Correa, it was the the like the Giants who refused him because he didn't pass yeah. that physical. Remember, mm. but it's just it's just weird. And it was a bad luck off season for the Giants, and it seems like we're down that path right now, especially after mm. like a total bad luck morale crushing actual season it just yeah. bled right into the was, off season right it's a bleak season and uh, yeah and it, it's looking like it's going to be a bleaker off season uh yeah. so so that was two weeks ago right where we yeah. started getting reports like you know that the jays are in the mix when guys on the mlb network um mlb dot like mlb.com like articles were being posted about the jays being like um in the sweepstakes like one of the finalists finalists teams were dropping out like like the teams that we mentioned before like it seemed like every day there was a new team to kind of like fall out of the picture but the jays were kind of like holding strong like by all accounts they the were jays, always in it yeah the jays were in it uh, like right up yeah. until the end i'd say too like we had the winter meetings at the end of last week that's when this really started to take off in terms 100%. of like momentum for the jays to the point where we heard before the first jet fiasco was or, or the last jet fiasco was the first one involving him flying to Dunedin yeah. and checking out the um, high performance department building in uh, in Dunedin where there's spring training for the Jays. So there was that during winter meetings, we had the press conference with Atkins, with Schneider. We had the Dave Roberts slip up that people were like, oh, what does that mean? We had the Dodgers GM come out and say, I'm not commenting on what Dave Roberts said and I won't be commenting on anyone who's not our player. Just all this type of stuff was moving towards the Jays, like in the Jays' favor, right? Yeah. And this momentum carried through the week. I feel like really where things were heating up to, like you were saying, Kawhi watch levels was probably Thursday night, very, very late Thursday night, because that's when we got the 
Twitter report of the plane. Yeah. I went to bed Thursday night. I'm sitting in my bed. I'm like, okay, one last refresh before, before I call it a night. And that's where I saw someone on Twitter say, hey, guys, there's this private jet leaving uh, Fort Wayne in Anaheim, and it's heading to, Tor- to Toronto at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. Eastern fr- on Friday. So, yeah, that like that's where the story to me started. Yeah. Um, on that did you Thursday. catch wind of that on the Thursday night yeah. or, or yeah. was it the I, Friday, right? I, I, I remember – I, th- I might have woken up to that new. I forget if I like I had woken up yeah. or I'd seen it. Was it was late. I, like I think it was it midnight was, when I saw yeah. this. So so to put it into context, like the the plane that was being chartered from Anaheim to to Toronto, it was it was it seemed like it was a spur of the moment type of thing because it had just popped up on the Thursday night. Uh the the jet itself people people found um instagram photos of shohei otani on the same exact type same, of jet same type of jet uh so that you know that definitely like added a little bit more fuel to the fire like for all intents and purposes like it it really really felt like shohei was going to be on that plane he was coming coming to toronto and to do what who knows but just the, <laughs> just the knowledge of him being in the city was enough to have every single Jays fan in this in Toronto, yeah. like on high alert, like it to was, put it bluntly, it was a shitstorm. It, it was, was a social storm. media oh, shitstorm. It right? was like that's it was. I don't crazy. know how it seems, I haven't it. seen anything like anything as close to that, and I alluded to it before since the Kawhi Leonard, yeah, you know, incident like that whole yeah. debacle. Yeah, uh, that was crazy in its own. But yeah. I, I, I always felt with with the Kawhi stuff. Regardless of his championship, I was like, okay, he won. If he wants to leave, let yes, go. like you know what it, I mean. It was like to me, he, this is worse. Stays, yeah, this was oh, like we literally had like we were like the you know like a cat when they when they see I don't even know how to describe like you like you, a laser. Yeah, like a <laughs> not a laser, but like you know you hang something. The the cat yeah, trying yeah. to like claw at it. But they could just never like the the cat just couldn't reach. The owner you know, just the keeps ball. moving it just enough. You know what like, it is? Dude, you ain't getting it yet. I had a that was a terrible analogy. It's like <laughs> the dog chasing the chasing its own tail. It'll never. Yeah, get that's a good one. The tail. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So now we'll take you to Friday. So that yeah that stuff comes out on Thursday night. Late Thursday. We're night. already starting to like have a bit of a stir. Friday morning, John Morosi puts out a tweet. And basically, this is when it became legit. Oh, d- oh dude, this is yeah. when like I was sent this tweet by four separate people, about five separate people. Is this the is this the on a route tweet or is this um the other one? Because there, there was a there was an initial one too. Which one was the one? I'm I'm gonna say the on route one is the okay. one that I was sent. So basically, to summarize it, it was just like John Morosi, who is what is his exact position at MLB. Like I know he's probably insider. Like he is a he like he is someone who is a reporter. Like he does this type of stuff. This is his job. He breaks. He has sources. There's there's like he has he clearly knows people around like these two teams. People who are credible. And there's a reason why he's on the MLB network. Like he's He's not like an undeniable reporter, but he's got a decent track record. Good track record. I'd even say. Right. We uh, I think we kind of uh, we said this in our chat. Like he is the kind of like the Darren Dreger equivalent. Like yeah. he's not he's not your he'll break some insider. news, but he's not yeah. your go to. He's not Elliot yeah. Friedman. Is is no like for yeah. the hockey fans? Like yeah, like not he's CJ, not Elliot He's not Fridge. Yeah, yeah. So and and there may there might be some misses time to time, but for the most part, if you see him tweet something, you, your eyes light up and you're like, okay, this is something to take seriously. So the tweet I was alluding to before he actually put that one out early Friday morning, he basically said, good morning, everybody. The, the show, Hey, decision is imminent within the next 24 hours. That was what he said in the morning before the on route tweet. So I think that's what kind of let everyone like, Oh my God, we need to be on high alert. He was, okay. he was pretty close on that. He, he missed that he by was. like 12 hours. He was. Yeah. Yeah. 30, if so, he said 36, I'd be like, John, you yeah. know what? You let us on, but. At the very least, he got the hours down because like, I think he signed at like it was like four o'clock the next day. Yeah, yeah, yesterday, that sounds right? about right. Between three and four yesterday. Yeah, 
Um, so, or so yeah. where it was official, at least. Yes. Yeah. We even had like we had a random opera singer based in Toronto saying oh. Kikuchi <laughs> is booking out a restaurant downtown for fifty plus people. And well, listen, Kikuchi was in Toronto. Um, his wife actually confirmed that that they had beef stew with their son. That was what was on the menu last night. It wasn't um, or on Friday night. Wasn't at a restaurant, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, people went crazy with that one there. It got yeah. traction on every radio show, all over Twitter. Everyone went crazy with that. Um, and then this plane departs at noon, right? I think that's when people especially started paying attention to it. We had TV shows that had the actual flight tracker on, on TV. They would go back and forth between talking, and then I'd see the flight tracker. That yeah. is Kawhi Watch stuff. No helicopter, but flight tracker. Thank God. That's, Thank God CP24 yes. wasn't involved this time. I'm sure, I'm sure they had it on... on like well, they were ready well, to go. They it was fueled up. To. They were waiting yeah. for the go. Yeah, a hundred percent. There's no way that that CP like P, like reputable news sites would have been involved if he actually was on the plane because that's like yeah. the biggest story in the city, bar none. Like there was nothing 100%. else going on that that would be a national story. Like forget the it would have been right? a national the country, story, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. So the, this plane takes off, and to me. Like it, it, I keep on saying this is where it gets legit, but it just keeps on going to other levels because then we get a report from a Dodgers based um, writer, right? Mm-hmm. He's, he's a, a credential blogger, writer, a BB credential, a W double A member, baseball like, writers of America. So, or uh, yeah, baseball writers association of America. So yeah. he's credentialed. He's that size legit as you can get, right? John Rossi is that too, but that is what that's like the reunion. That's what makes you official, right? Yeah. To be taken seriously. Uh, so JP Hornstra is the, the guy's name. He puts out his report saying Shohei's choice is in. He's chosen the Toronto Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. Everyone freaks out. We wait for confirmation because it's like, okay, listen, you're, you're credentialed. We need the insiders to follow up on this. Um, and the first insider I think we heard from was John Morosi. John Morosi, yeah. And he's this like, is the, he's the like I heard the tweet. same sources. Yeah. My sources are also telling me, uh, sh- uh, well, well, actually, no. So, you know what? It was it, Shohei Otani's en route to Toronto. And he also adds his agency, CAA, won't comment on his travel plans. That was also part of his tweet, yeah. <laughs> which we can get back to. Yeah. But yeah, we get that tweet. And at this point, it's pandemonium. It's absolute yeah. pandemonium. We don't get any other news until this plane lands in Toronto. And that's got to be around 4.30 yeah. yeah, I think yeah, I think it was around probably between four and five. We Eastern. had, dude, we had nothing between. I yeah. I would say it was like twelve. Like when like that tweet, all that yeah. stuff happened before lunch, and then four o'clock was when the plane was. I think it was like four thirty that the plane actually landed or it was scheduled yeah. to land. Dude, so I'm and, curious, Dave. What was the first? Pers- what was the first piece of information, or the, what was the first um, social media post that you saw after the plane had landed? Because I, I I know what the first thing I saw was, um, and it's crazy to think about. Somebody, in retrospect. I think I think it was. Uh, I I might have sent it into you guys where it was somebody who works for the CBC. I, off the top of my head, I can't remember this person's name. I don't even know if they're like credentialed or they were just sent down there to like go see, or if they were just doing it on their own because they knew that they. And somebody had a picture of um, Robert Hershevek who was on who was actually on Shark the Tank fan. so no Otani no Otani to be found Roger Robert Hershevek who's yeah who's a Canadian billionaire Canadian on, yeah that he was on Dragon's Den and Shark Tank um and yeah there's no Otani in sight and so that's yeah. I'm pretty sure it was somebody from the CBC um I, I think you're right it was a CBC based photographer I think you're right on that one for me though the first thing that I saw was uh, someone tweeting out the video of Shohei Otani entering an airport. The airport. With the Christmas oh. tree in the background. Dude, and when I saw that. And blue white ornaments on the tree. Yeah, I was like, there's no there's no way this so, guy is not in Toronto right now. Yeah. 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 Like, it's blue and white Christmas ornaments on the tree, too. Like, And so I, the I sun was know. setting as well. Yes. You yeah, know like, I mean? it like, all checked out. Everything uh, checked out about it. It's actually incredible that um someone had that in their back pocket ready to Crazy. go i guess unbelievable right? who knows where what it's from because it's got to be it would ha- it would have had either been a very recent flight within like this christmas time period or years ago last year yeah. or before that right like 100 
Christmas trees aren't up 24-7. So and when, when is and when is Shohei Otani at an airport? <sighs> like you know what I, I mean? Like, even in the way that everyone like this, the, whoever this was, it was secretive. Itself, the, yeah, the phone was like just over the edge, taking this little timid video. Everyone's like giggling. Oh my god, he's there! It's it. it totally fit the scene of what everyone was describing. Crazy. Totally. And then, like you said, we get the news that it's it's Robert Herjavec. We get the the Instagram post by him. We get the Instagram post by Drake in the Otani All Star jersey, right? The Drake curse lives on, yeah. as everyone's yeah, gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just absurd stuff going on. And then we hear from two reporters, at least as far as I can remember. The first one was Bob Nightingale, um, and he's once again one another one of those I'd say same tier as Morosi, okay? Because um, he was actually the one. Uh, who led us to the meme of last year with Aaron Judge uh, to the Giants. He had tweeted out, Arson Judge to the Giants confirmed, is what his tweet was. Um, so that lives on in infamy. But he comes out and says, Shoya Otani is not in Toronto. He is not on a plane. He is at home in SoCal. And then one of our Toronto-based reporters double down on that and say, yep, my sources are hearing the same thing too. And yeah. we're just left, like, just... A blue ball. I don't, I don't even know That's what it was. How do you describe was, that feeling? It was yeah. blue. It was blue balls. Yeah. Like yeah. It was for lack absurd. of a better turn. Like we no. we were left like on the edge, but but there was still that hope though, because because everything yes. leading up to that Friday was like, okay, that's fine. If it's not gonna happen tonight, maybe it'll it'll take like to the end. Because I had also heard yeah. reports that it was like. That the decision would be made till maybe like the end of the weekend, so maybe like today. Passan Jeff Passan, who is the fridge of baseball, yeah. had said so. I mentioned Morosi's timeline is 24 hours on Friday morning, Passan's timeline was um 96 hours, so basically okay. Monday until by tomorrow. Monday. Yeah, yes, yeah, so he was basically saying by the end of the weekend, this will be done. So he that's what his timeline was. My, my yeah. actual thought was after the plane stuff. After Friday yeah. happened, I was like, okay, we're not going to hear anything until Sunday. I, I was like, okay, sun, like, don't you got give... cone of silence for all of Saturday? Cone of silence, cone of silence oh, for all of Saturday, man. yeah. Like, I know there was a lot of traction on Friday, but I was like, I, yeah. I still don't think anything's going to happen on the Saturday, and it's going to take until the Sunday for everything to be sorted out. Yeah. I should mention, too, after we get all of this and we're kind of left in limbo, uh, JP Hornstra says, listen, I'm still sticking to my guns. My report is my report. Um, and I will post an update Saturday morning on more information regarding my report. So that was part of the, like you were saying, the hope as a Jays fan, like, listen, this is still not over. I do think some of us were panicking, myself included, saying, oh, my God, what if this was all a test and we failed it? What if we failed the privacy test? We were stalking this guy for 24 hours and it's it's all for naught. That was some See, of the, every, the, I, the people's I don't. Thoughts. I honestly, I don't think that's paranoia I, talking. I don't that's think, paranoia. yeah, that is our paranoia talking, and and it's our paranoia because we saw, you know, we saw what happened to Dave Roberts. We mentioned it before, like he kind of let it yeah. slip that the Dodgers were talking about it, and Shohei Otani and his his whole camp. Their one rule was, uh, don't talk about any of the negotiations to the media. Yeah. Let them. Uh, and you shouldn't during the process. Nothing. Yeah, like nothing. Squat. They wanted radio silence, right? And, and Dave yeah. Roberts kind of comes out in a press conference and he's like, yeah. What, what did he say exactly? Do you remember? Um, it was interesting because he had a long pause in his answer. He's like, should um, I say this? Yeah, like he just yeah, kind of yes. sits there and says, yeah, we met with him. And it's kind of like he just kind of lets it squeak out of his mouth. Yeah. Freudian slim. Just like, yeah, we met with him. Thought it went pretty well. Um, he's obviously a tremendous player. I, yeah, I, I know for sure it was just kind of that pause. And then, yeah, we met with him. Because then, because in his mind, it's like it's like, what can I get away with saying? Basically, yes. right? Like he's I, like, I, I give want these guys the littlest nugget. And, well, he even said to me, he's like, my he said like his personal philosophy is, I'm not here to lie to you guys. Um, but I haven't given anything up by saying what I've said. That was his philosophy, I think. Right. So you just try to be an honest dude. At the end of the day, it's like, yeah, you could talk like. I, I don't have it. Like, if I was in that situation, I'd be like, okay, like, that's fine. Whatever. Like you, yeah. you talk like a dude, I could, I'm talking to you. I'm not asking yeah. you right now, Christian to sign a 10 year, $700 million contract. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, if I had that type of money, I, I mean, I would, if I could, but I don't. So, uh, yeah. So yeah. then, okay. then we are, you know, we're, we're on the edge, right. On Saturday, we got to go to, we have to go to bed Friday night, not knowing what the hell comes next. Yeah. We're still Left, in limbo. We're back at square one, honestly. Right. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm telling you, Dave. So this is what happened with me on that Friday, that Friday night, I had returned to a Ben Nicholson Smith tweet that he put out. This was actually on Thursday night, but I, I pulled it back up. I'm like, I'm just going to read myself this tweet a couple of times before bed. It was to the effect of show. It was from his podcast as well from at the letters with Arden Zwelling. He's like, Shohei Otani likes the Blue Jays. This is real. He has real interest in the Blue Jays. Shohei Otani has genuine interest in the Blue Jays. The Jays are going to be a finalist or the team that gets him. That was the quote. It was like him repeating himself four times over. I'm just, I'm just going to read this a couple of times. And, you know, this is a call for me, man. It'll, As I go it'll to put bed me to bed. And not know yeah. what the hell is going on. Literally. I'm legitimately. <laughs> yep. So, Saturday morning. So Saturday, it com- we come to find out that the Jays were kind of that treat dangled above the the Lions pit, right? We were the decoy, basically. So it kind of it transpires that it comes out that Shohei signs a 10-year, $700 million deal. So that's yeah. about 70 mil a season. 70 mil a year. However, there's there's some wrinkles to this here, right? Yeah. The wrinkle is that, and we don't necessarily have all the details yet still, but it's been reported there will be many, many deferral options in this contract. Deferral as in, uh, listen, you can only pay me 10, or you can pay me just 10 million this year, pay me that other 60 million another year. Mm -hmm. And there's multiple of those. We don't know how many, we don't know how many years, but the idea of this is it allows the Dodgers to free up themselves more financially in certain years to go even more all in on their roster no matter what as it pertains to the luxury tax i think it's called the cbt competitive balance tax in mlb now because they just renegotiate their cba but the cbt is calculated based off of annual average value very similar to the nhl um, when it comes to the salary cap so no matter what there will be a 70 million dollar hit on the dodgers books for 10 years the actual money he's being paid isn't necessarily 70 million a year. Just like in the NHL, players can get signing bonuses that changes the salary of a contract from year to year. John Tavares was a great example. Uh, I, that was one of the first big ones. Yeah, I believe um, the NFL structures their salaries yeah. like that. And I think yeah. their, theirs is done just because of the, the injury concerns. Like there's mm-hmm. there's a certain amount of like guaranteed money you could get on a, on a yeah. contract um especially i notably like running backs they they either get all of their money or like none of their money and there was a big fight this past off season to like for the for the uh running backs to be like to get some of their money basically like there was no in between uh yeah i remember seeing stuff i think it was saquon barkley it was one that there was a lot like a lot of the top the higher tiered uh running backs who were out of contract were like holding out basically to try to just get their market value issue. right like there's no and reason it, that they should get less and yeah. it didn't didn't really work for for the most part yeah. unfortunately yeah. um I, dude and another thing that we also forgot to mention like we had um we had a, a local radio station like one of the more reputable yeah. radio stations like they i think i think we can be blunt considering it's like the jays the jays yeah dude right we had blair and barker the blair and barker show would come on for like the last hour of like on a national like that was a national program like kipper and born when they're on like on national tv that's national tv so for them to take up uh the last hour of that program so that would have been from five to six that was like when we saw that schedule change that's a sign yeah because the jays uh, somebody had said that the Jays had scheduled a press conference as well for yes. CCM. Now that that one, I didn't ever take too seriously because if you looked into that person, it was like okay, they had like a thousand followers. It was like, what's your connections here? I didn't really ever take that one seriously, but just based off of okay, the Jays are owned by Rogers. Rogers owns Sportsnet. Connect the dots here, right? Yeah. If Rogers knows something about the Jays, they're gonna relay it to Sportsnet. Yeah. Obvious. Obviously, they're they're gonna come prepared, right? 
not the case. I got to rethink that. So I, yeah, <sighs> that, that was once again, that to me, that's, that is a sign. That was a sign. And all these signs were smoke screens, evidently just going back to his contract for a minute. And I think we can give our thoughts on at, like as Jay fans and where the Jays go from here, uh, the Otani contract, I'm sure people have like seen the, the comparisons thrown around already. A, it's the richest contract ever handed out to an athlete in history. Okay. Like bar none. Not Ronaldo, not Messi, not LeBron. Ronaldo does, which, what, what is Ron's? So I think Ronaldo's contract, I th- and you can correct me, maybe you probably know better than me. I don't think his was, like his is an insane number. Like I think it was like 200 something million, whatever, for like two years or something like that. Like, so it didn't have the length. Probably on a yearly basis, uh, okay. in just a single year, he's probably getting paid the most. So, so I but think a contract guaranteed money. Yeah, it's Shohei. You're right. That's okay. what I think. It so, is. so this is like, quite literally, quite literally, like a historic contract. Yeah, like there's there's no doubts about it, and and it's yeah. all paid in uh, USD. So if that yes. goes through, um, like if Rogers a- ended up. You know, if we signed him, if the Jays end up signing yeah. him too, that that deal's worth north a bill. of a billion dollars. Billion dollars, crazy to think about, which is Still. insane to think about. Insane, insane, insane. Okay, yeah. one second to Ochani, seven hundred million. That's more than the Oakland Athletics payroll for the past ten years. Yeah, seven hundred million. That's more than the franchise valuation of the Arizona Coyotes of yep. this year. Yeah. Um, that's that's absurd. I think it was more than twenty eight MLS teams or something like that. I would have. Um, I would wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, just just insanity, pure pure Crazy. insanity. Uh, one thing about the deferrals, though, people are people that are a lot smarter than us. I think when it comes to money, this is where Brian would have been really useful. Yeah, um, everyone says money now is worth more than money later, and the idea behind that is inflation. Mm-hmm. So if Shohei is deferring his money in his contract years down the line, it could be like. 20 years or something like this is one of those situations because i think that the dodgers have found a really nice loophole in the in the cba apparently Mm -hmm. um 30 million in 20 years might not be worth what 30 million is worth now right yeah so that is in a way he actually gave the dodgers a discount of sorts um but only the dodgers had the confidence and comfortability to hand out a contract structured like that like, I don't know if other ownership groups would have been comfortable saying, oh, my God, we might have to give Shohei 30 million in 15 years. Yeah. They wanted a just a just a standard deal. 10 years, probably 600 million. We don't we don't even really know what the other offers were yet. But the I difference think, would I, have been the money would have been up front. From what I heard, the, the, the Jays offer was at about 600. And, and the reason why uh was because it was reported at the beginning of talks 10 years 700 mil was the ask like that was the rate that Shohei wanted basically that was the asking price um can you imagine Dave what this guy would have got if he wasn't injured like this guy got the best contract ever yeah coming off of this catastrophic injury yeah relative to his sport and he cannot like like do one of the two things that comes as advertised with him right for at least a year there's, and there's no guarantees past that like we don't yeah. know that he yeah, yeah that he could okay. come back right okay let's uh let's rapid fire let's go through um the sides like i just can't help but feel like like i was like i was personally wronged by yeah. shohei otani like i feel used as a jays fan as much as like the rest of the Jays fans, and and I I, I could have put out a guess here that Ross Atkins feels used, Ed Rogers yeah. feels used, right? Like, I I think they would have to, and I think at the same time we can commend them on the effort they put into trying to get this done. A hundred percent. Yeah. So your your cross sport parallel, we think it's Kawhi. That's the one that makes the most sense here, right? At least can, when it comes to Toronto. Um, goes to an LA based team. The third yeah. team in the running was also an LA based team. Um yeah, it does that's probably the best comparison. I was thinking even there's like the Durant um ordeal where yeah. he he goes to Golden State, the Giants of the NBA after they go what was it 73 and 9 in a season. 
it's just like and the rich lost. get richer yeah. and lost. Yes. So that was it. And well, and it's kind of a parallel when it comes to the Dodgers, because despite being in the playoffs 11 years in a row, they only have one world series to show for it. And they, whether you agree with this or not, people will throw a little bit of an asterisk on it. Not an Astros asterisk. That asterisk yeah. is like this big. Yeah. Dodgers one might be Some, like this, but it's a an smidge. asterisk. And there's an it's asterisk. A little bit of an asterisk. hundred percent. hundred percent. Um, yeah. Yeah, dude, like uh, this morning I I literally got up, got up and I like I had time to process this, process it and I was like I was seeing red. I'm like, dude, yeah. we quite literally got like we were used as got a bad result. <laughs> yeah. Uh actually here, I actually wanted to ask you this though. What like where were you when you when the news broke? When you found out it's Dodgers, what were you doing? Lay out the scene for me. Dude, and then I'll, was, I'll lay out my scene. I was downtown. Uh, so I was supposed okay. to go to the distillery nice. district uh, for the Christmas market with, yeah. with a friend yeah. of mine. Yeah. Dude, there was no parking nowhere. Like, we didn't even go nice. to the distillery district. So I was like, okay, let's go find somewhere to eat. We're already here. Yeah, let's find somewhere yeah. to eat quickly. And then, you know, we'll just, like, head back home, watch the Leaf game, whatever. Dude, I not no sooner do I, like, sit down at the table. Like, I'd park the car. We parked the car, yeah. like, a couple blocks away. Um, so you're, you're in a restaurant. I'm, at this I'm point. literally, I'm in a, like, it was literally like even like a dive bar. And I had, I like, yeah. I wasn't even there, there. There was a hockey game on. So that's what they were showing. And dude, I go to pull out my phone and it's just like messages like, like this, like going up. Like, I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, something, something happened. happened one way or another. It happened. Yeah. It happened. Yeah. Dude. What yeah. about you? Deflating, deflating, right? Like you just yeah. like instantly, like it was the stomach sinking. Dude. I, I should actually mention the fact that I I got bamboozled and it, and I almost bamboozled Dave by accidentally sending one. <laughs> it, was 20... a, it was a, a passing tweet saying, "Yeah, he's going to the Angels, boys. Show he's going to the Angels." It's from 2017. Yeah. I saw that. I, to be honest, I didn't even know that in that tweet it said Angels because I had just seen LA. LA, like, yeah, that's like, so I, I sent it, and until you were like. F you, Christian. God damn you. I yeah. didn't even know what I had done at that You point. almost bamboozled like, me, like, man. Listen, I, I, like I said, I got that heart sinking feeling. I thought, okay, I better not feel that again. But I did on Saturday. I was at work. I'm sharpening some skates. My buddy comes up to me. He's like, dude, Shams tweeted that he's going to the Dodgers. I'm like, Shams? Okay, he's an NBA insider. Wait, what is going on? Is that a fake account? It's like, nah, dude. By the time he switches to Shams' Twitter feed, I pull up my phone, I refresh it, I see the passing tweet that he posted on Instagram. Deflated. I'm sharpening skates. It was like I literally forgot how to do my job for two minutes. <laughs> I, I I had just stopped to sharpen. I was gonna give the customer some skates. I forgot to do half of the half of my job for the sharpen. I had to take some skates out of an oven because then we were baking them for someone else. Forgot to put the insoles back in. Like I was just flustered beyond hell for five minutes. Ugh. It was it was awful. I'm yeah, like my buddy there was a Jays fan. I worked with another buddy who's also a Jays fan. He was there at the game that I was at in uh, two years ago against the Mariners where we blew the 8-1 lead in the sixth inning. We were, we were both at that game, and we were both working that day. We got to stay away from each other on days that are relevant to the Jays because things don't go well. But yeah, they, like, yeah it's, they really don't. It does not go well. Um, Dave, where, where did the Jays – like where did the Jays go from here, man? Like, well, Is there it, anywhere to go from here? It looks, that, that's, it looks like they're going down. Like there's no way yeah. around it. Like there's nobody else on the market. It's not like that. There's another fish that you could get that could cut like that. The could, next like, biggest fish shoot. is also a Japanese player. It's Yoshinobu, uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto um, yeah. from Japan, who is going to get over 300 mil as a pitcher. And guess who's involved there? The Dodgers. The, the Dodgers. Yeah. The Yankees. The Mets. Yeah. Jays are not the big teams. Jays, yeah. Jays are not getting. It. No, yeah. yeah, and we don't we don't need pitching. We needed Shohei. We needed a power left handed bat for the middle of the lineup to separate Vladdy and Bowen. Dude, and the and offense. then in the future, if we needed a uh, a third pitcher, a fourth pitcher, yeah. I would yeah. be comfortable. Just stack the... Yeah, like he's not yeah. an ace by by all means. He's not your number one. I would never say like put him as your number one, like your ace pitcher. But dude, Shohei as your three every like five days, like. And he's gonna like put up You're like laughing. 45 bombs, like a hundred plus RBIs. Like, dude, you honestly can't get much like can't get much better than that. So I I I mean I, I would like yeah. to see the Jays maybe go for I've seen Cody Bellinger being thrown out. Like, I like Cody Bellinger. 
former Dodger. Yeah. Hasn't been as good since, like, well, he actually, yeah. He, he was really surgeons. good last year, but he had three awful years before really that. God so awful years, yeah. If you're signing him, it can't be long term. Yeah. That's the thing, right? And someone will probably bite on it long term, right? And then mm. after Cody, it it's, goes really, really down. I right? don't know. The maybe agency. Maybe what, what you want to, like, maybe you want to call, like, Cleveland, see if, uh, if Jose let's Ramirez. do the Jose Martinez, uh, Jose, oh, sorry, Jose Ramirez uh, sweepstakes again. Go at it again. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not a bad idea. I mean, what was our plan B? Because plan B is now also off the table. Plan B was Soto. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 So, and, and he went to divisional rival. Like, yeah. And he went to the Speaking A's. of like yeah. just the Jays' future, the Rays are the Rays, and they are apparently going to be making some trade offs of their better players. But they've done that before and maintained their competitive nature in the division so can't ever count them out orioles are on the come up yeah, after winning the, rise. the east uh, and, sorry they were they won the al even if they regress like they're still really 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 good mm-hmm. yankees are the favorites and they the red be. Sox. you can't tell me they're doing nothing in the offseason to make their roster better they, they literally just fired their gm after the season because they need to get better so yeah where does that leave yeah, the jays they, they... <sighs> Upshits we're gonna be man. a decent team like we're just yeah. we're we're in the mushy middle we're gonna be a mid team again like that's that's we're looking for a wild card the, spot the only i think the only way this team d- makes does rights. anything like you you need like vlad to return to yes. the form of his yes. past right like the there's yeah. no way around it he can't have another year where he's putting up like 25 bombs and like you know 75 to 85 RBIs like he has to be a 40 plus 100 plus RBI type of guy right like there's no way around it like you need like obviously you need the stars to be the stars like the guys like that you pay the money but you know having a little bit of an insurance bat in there to line up that that's kind of anemic in the middle yeah you know where you're able to you know maybe you put Shohei in like the two spot the ones I wouldn't lead him off but maybe say like two or three and then you push those the other guys like that you have like at two, at three, at four, push them all down. That's a great, that's a great ad. Yeah. But yeah, I, don't, I, I don't think, think the best anybody... case scenario is we repeat last offseason, but even that didn't go amazing. It went just okay. Yeah. Um, so that's the best case scenario. Real quick, we're really short on time here. Um well, how does Rogers sell tickets for the Jays when they've just renovated the arena, but there's no shiny new toy? To show off, right? One of my boys is score check. He bought home uh home opener tickets for two hundred dollars a ticket yesterday. That mm-hmm. that's right. That's it's not looking mm-hmm. like a goodbye right now. 